Well, Stadge, uh, man, it's it's almost you're almost in the promised land. You're almost in the finals. I think mathematically, you're almost across the line. And the two all draw yesterday. I, I bet you watched that. And was there enormous controversy toward the end in the ninety seventh minute? Yeah, it was a it was a massive game. It was an unbelievable finish to that game. Actually, it, it almost um almost encapsulates the whole A-League, uh, just watching the last 10 minutes of that game, uh, the penalty, penalty save, and then there was probably another five or six penalty shouts after that in the Wellington penalty box. Um, it was gripping, gripping viewing, um, but you know, ultimately for both teams, they got a point and they're still alive, but, but made it a little bit tough, tougher for both of them to uh, make the finals, but um, oh, look, it was, it was a great game to watch, to be honest. Yeah, have you allowed yourself to just reflect on what you achieved last week against MacArthur. I mean, what a heroic win that was. And your team played so well. Is that the best football you feel they've played all year? No, look, I don't know about that. But um, I, I thought we played well. Uh, and I thought we played well the week before that as well against Melbourne City. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's a good sign that we're coming into a, a little bit better form, you know, towards the back end of the year um, and, and heading into the finals. But... You know, I don't agree that that's a lay down was there yet. It's still mathematically possible for teams to catch us, so we're not going to rest on our laurels, as they say, and, and still know how hard the task is to ensure we finish as high up the ladder as we can. Uh, I think earlier in the year there might have been like a goal drought for a little bit, but um, you must have been delighted with the amount of chances you created. Yeah, I think we've been doing that all year. Um, there hasn't been too many games where, where we haven't had many chances on goal, maybe with the exception of uh, the two Melbourne City games. Um, every other game, and maybe even the last Newcastle game, to be honest, we didn't create too many. Um, but apart from that, I think that most of the matches, we, we created more chances than the opposition. So, you know, from that perspective, I've always been pretty pleased with how many chances we've created. Execution it always comes down to on the day. and. You know, and on, on Thursday night, I thought we could have easily had three or four. You know, Cleese was a little bit unlucky that the one he hit like a bullet was offside and then, you know, the one that was onside just hit the side netting. But, you know, fantastic input from him and Marco and I thought even Negro as well and Danny and, and Nizzi, I thought they were extremely influential along with the usual Simo up front. Uh, I thought we were going to get Simo this morning, but we might not. I was going to ask him about playing with someone like Marco. Like, what a difference and what a player he is to have in your squad. You said a couple of things about leadership and belief and what those two guys do for your team is incredible. Yeah, look, they're, they're like that. Most importantly, they're like that off the pitch. Um, you know, on the pitch, everyone, it's there for everyone to see, but, but the, the way they carry themselves off the pitch. And, and Marco knew what his role was here uh, before he arrived. And, and, you know, when we sat down and had a meeting with him before, he even accepted the deal to come to Australia. We, we told him the circumstances around the club and the team and how many youngsters we had in the team. And he's embraced, embraced that challenge on and off the pitch with open arms and, and he's imparted his knowledge at, at every point uh, with our younger players. And you can see the enthusiasm with which he plays on the field as well. So, you know, he's only getting better and better. And, and as per usual, it always takes time for for visa players to get used to the game and, and get used to the A-League and their teammates and all that kind of stuff, and, and he's certainly grown into his role. Stadge, as well as his uh, incredible skill on the ball, is he even faster than you expected for, for a guy his age? Um, not really. I don't think he's that old, to be honest. I still think he's, he's in his low 30s, and, and we've seen so many players in the A-League who are mid-30s and even late-30s still holding their own, and and, you know, people like Durante and Diamante and Barisha and, and, and players like that, uh, Castro, you know, they're into their late 30s and, and you know, their skill level and their, and their smarts about the game just get them by and still make them extremely effective players in our league. So there's no reason why Marco can't keep doing that for a number of years to come. Hey, how are you feeling tomorrow night? It doesn't get much better than a derby to secure a spot, um, you know, and uh, also... You must feel like it's an opportunity for Central Coast members and fans to just rally around and celebrate the achievements of this team so far. Yeah, definitely. Uh, two home games to finish the comp, so tomorrow night's extremely important. Saturday is as well against Western United, and, and we definitely want to get some momentum, uh, more momentum leading into the finals. Um, but, but great occasion for the club, and just to be able to lift ourselves up off the floor that we've been on for five or six years. and. 
and drag ourselves off that canvas and, and be up on our feet and challenging towards the end of the year. I know how, how, how happy it's made the community and the football community around here, but, but we know that that's only half the job. Uh, we've got a job to finish. We've worked extremely hard to put ourselves in this position, so it's really important that we finish the job off and, and capitalise on, on this opportunity and, and ensure we get ourselves into the grand final and win it. You saw the Jets just uh, two to three weeks ago, I think it was the 15th of May, and a 1-0 win. But what, what are your thoughts about them and where they're at in their season? Oh, look, it's obviously a tough year for them, um, and they've got into a little bit of a rut um, you know, in terms of not being able to secure results, but their performances haven't been too bad, to be honest. They actually play some good football and, and maybe just have, have lost key parts of a match rather than, than, than whole matches, and you know, that's probably what's let them down. But... But they're a good team. They've got experienced players, um, you know, great coaching staff. And I've got a lot of respect for, for that whole team. And, you know, I don't think their position on, on the ladder reflects how good they actually are and how good they can be. So, you know, definitely not a team we're going to un underestimate. I think they've got a lot of quality, a lot of experience. And on the night, they can, they can definitely turn it on. What about, in your opinion, danger players on the night? Oh, look, just their whole their whole team, you know, when you've got a team packed with people like Bogues and, and Thomas Stanley and O'Donovan and, and and Hoffman and guys who've been around the A-League forever, Jack Duncan in goals or Italiano, either one, Matty Miller who was here, like their team's got a lot of experience, um, you know, and, and good quality experience. So, you know, they're definitely not a team that we underestimate. Yeah, Stabs, this is probably the question you've been asked uh, more than any other. Like, who are you any closer to your decision? And I know you're not going to tell us this morning, but <laughs> any closer to who comes in for Ruan Tony? Uh, look, that's a battle probably between uh, two players at the moment, Dan Hall and Lewis Miller. Um, they've both come on at different times during the year and, and, and shown what they can do. Uh, Dan Hall, you know, had a crack at centre-back um, two or three games back against Sydney FC and did a, did a pretty good job. Uh, Lewis Miller's come on at different times at right back and, and, and done a good job as well, including against Melbourne City just last week. So ultimately it'll come down to uh, one of those two at this point and, and we'll see how they go at training and then hopefully when they get their chance they'll, they'll grab it with both hands. Last week after the MacArthur game you spoke about just the development of some of the players. Now that must fill your heart with joy, the way that Ruan Tonic has progressed this year, that he's about to go and play in World Cup qualifiers or be a part of the squad anyway. And uh, just share your thoughts on on that side of coaching, the, the astronomical development of some of your squad. Yeah, look, uh, I think the moment that that really hit home was um, probably a month ago when Ruan had his 50th match in the A-League and we've celebrated a few... This year, I think it was Ollie's 150th the other day. Was it Simo's 200th or 250th, you know, a couple, a couple of months back. And and then I remember a 50th, and then Ruan had his 50th game. And I just remember watching him in the A-League for the last four or five years. You know, I remember back at Melbourne City just being a fan and sitting back on a Friday night and just watching how, how good this guy was and, and thinking about how good he could be and everyone talking him up. And, and then five years later, he'd only played... 20 or 25 matches of A-League and been to four or five different clubs. Um, you know, he'd been to Adelaide and Melbourne City and Wanderers and, and Brisbane Raw before he finally landed here. So just to think that that we've got an environment here that, that's brought the best out of him and, and he's starting, for me, it's just the start of his journey, just starting to realise his potential obviously makes us all, all feel pretty good and, and that sense of accomplishment. But, you know, it's a... You know, it's a whole of environment type thing, like it's everyone, you know, the teammates, the coaching staff, the whole club around him, you know, the fact that he's been able to get consistent matches week in, week out, and he's been able to deliver and build his confidence. And, and really in the last month it is a turning point for him where I really saw him grow and, and feel comfortable in his own in his own skin on the field and, and actually started to communicate and talk and, and become a leader in his own right within our team. So, so for me, the world's his oyster now. Um, he, he's shown that he can play at this level, he's shown that he can be good at this level and, and if he keeps growing and evolving, there's no reason why he can't be you know, a regular soccer route down the track. Yeah, great answer. Um, this one might have gone under the radar a bit. I know David was across it, but uh, uh, another guy that's been around the league a bit, Beerus, your goalkeeper, he clocked up his 50th last week as well and you know, he's another guy that said how happy he is to be on the Central Coast after being at a couple of other clubs. Yeah, look, ultimately that's 
you know, that's their own value system and their own sort of subjective analysis of, of, of where they're at. And Beerus, again, he's, he's had a great year and probably his most consistent year for a long time. But you could rattle through our whole team and, and probably say the same about so many players. You know, Simo, who's been around for 17 or 18 years in the A-League and, and it's probably one of his best years as well. Um, Marco, you know, Ollie's played out of his skin. Um, and then when you look at the younger players like Kai Rolls, who, who probably 12 months ago was on the fringes of the Oli Ruse, and for me now he's, he has to be almost a walk-up start to go to the Olympics. And you know people like Gianni, who, who came here on trial just 18 months ago, didn't have an A-League club, and came here on trial with 30 or 40 other kids, um, and, and within that period of time has become you know one of the best defensive midfielders in the A-League, and, and going to the Olympics probably uh, next month as well. So just to think that... You know, all those little elements have happened and, and keep happening just, just means that, you know, it's a good positive environment and everyone's thriving off each other. Um, and I guess that's, you know, a little bit of a secret to the success that we've had this year. Stanji, you're just looking at tomorrow night or have you got one eye on the weekend as well? No, nah, look, just tomorrow night. Uh, you can't focus on too far ahead. And, you know, I always think about all those things, no doubt, and think about who we could be playing down the track. Um, you know, I'd be lying if I said I didn't think about all those things, but really 99.999% of the focus is on tomorrow night and, and all the energy into all the energies into what we need to do to win tomorrow night. Have you felt a, a shift like from Central Coast members and fans? Like, you know, this year, have you felt it like at, at the stadium? I know crowds have got bigger and bigger, but uh, give me your perspective. Yeah, there's definitely, or well, definitely the crowds have been bigger. There's been a greater excitement level, but no doubt that comes with, with winning as well. Um, I think the, the thing that's probably changed as well, which, which is um, a positive, is the expectations of the team are higher. Um, even times where we don't play so well, for example, against Newcastle, but we still won. Uh, there was still some pessimism around and some criticism, which was, which was healthy and good um, to show that we're held to a new level of account. Um, you know, possibly in the past, a 1-0 win would have been celebrated like a grand final victory. So the fact that, you know, we're held to account to a new standard is, is a real positive, you know, amongst the, the football fans of the Central Coast. Hey, by the way, have you heard anything about what happens moving forward with the Melbourne teams? Uh, not really. I just know that Western United are travelling up tonight. It's their home game, but they're playing MacArthur. Um, out at Leichhardt Oval, so you know that's all I know about that. The Melbourne City versus Newcastle game, I'm not sure what's happened with that one. I'm not sure um, why they didn't travel up as well and play Newcastle. Or what's happening with that match? All I know is that it's been postponed. But Western United, uh, you know, they're, they're playing tonight in Sydney at Leichhardt Oval, and then they'll, uh, from what I've heard, they'll stay up and play us on the weekend. Hey, um, just one more question about uh, the game against Macarthur and. Will you adopt that same style, the way that your fullbacks got forward and Clisby in particular? Like, that's one of his best games that, that we've seen all year. Um, but just the tactical battle that you won that night, uh, will you be looking to do something similar against the Jets? I look, every game's got its own sort of unique little variables that we, that we try and include. Depends on, on the opponent and depends on, you know, the things that they bring to the table as well in terms of their shape and their strengths and weaknesses. So... So, um, yeah, we'll have a look at that. But you're right, I'm not going to tell you tonight anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this morning. Come on. You give us nothing. <laughs> something. Oh, any other rinks and outs? Like, how did everyone pull up last week and is there any kind of rotation system? Uh, look, no, everyone's fine at the moment. Um, Danny De Silva's probably the only question mark, so we'll see how he pulls up after training today. Hey, congrats again. See All you tomorrow right. night. Thank you.